The thermocouple is a very simple and cheap instrument capable of measuring different degrees of temperature. Due to its simplicity, it is used in many industrial sectors. The basic principle that uses the thermocouple for its operation was discovered by physicist Thomas Johann Seebeck. In 1822, he discovered that in a closed circuit, formed by two conductors of different nature and subjected to a temperature gradient established by a potential difference that is proportional to the temperature differences. In this video, we will discover how a thermocouple works, its characteristics, and all its variants. JAWS, engaged for over 10 years in the industrial supplies sector, offers in its catalog every type of thermocouple from major manufacturers. This is a thermocouple. It is a probe made up of two different metal wires welded at one end. This part, called the hot joint, will be positioned in the space to be measured. On the other hand, there's the other end, called the cold joint. From here we'll start two metal connections, generally made by copper which will then be hooked to a measuring instrument to detect the temperature provided by the probe. But how does a thermocouple work? Imagine holding a copper bar with your hand on one end, while the opposite side is exposed to a source of heat, a flame for example. The heat will begin to spread along the entire length of the bar until it reaches our hand. This is because the heat excites the molecules and atoms present in the copper bar, which in turn will allow free electrons to move easily, reaching the cooler part and heating it. This happens because there is a temperature gradient, or a difference in temperature, from one point to another. In our case, from the hottest to the coldest point of the copper bar. If we look closely at the images, we will notice that the colder part now has more negative charged electrons, while the hot part, deprived of its electrons, will be positively charged. Thanks to this difference, we can measure the electric potential present in the copper bar, obtaining one specific voltage. Now let's grab our thermocouple, and remember that to measure the temperature, we need a potential difference. If the thermocouple were made up of two equal wires, the heat will be distributed in the same way and we will have the same number of electrons. By measuring the voltage, we will notice that it is equal to zero because there is no potential difference in a circuit consisting of two equal metal wires. In fact, thermocouples are composed of two wires of different metals, for example, copper and iron, which conduct heat and free electrons in different ways, thus creating a potential difference. This difference is generated when the thermocouple circuit is closed, with the help of two copper wires, called compensated cables, attached to the respective cold junctions on one side to a multimeter on the other, it is possible to convert the potential difference into temperature. For the measurement to be accurate, the cold junction must be in an environment with a known temperature to compare it to that of the hot junction. Ideally, in the laboratory, the cold junction was immersed inside a liquid solution of water and ice, therefore at a constant temperature of zero Celsius. But since this is not very practical as a solution, technology runs to the aid of science. A sensor is installed in the multimeter to detect the cold junction temperature. The cold junction is extended thanks to the balanced cables inside the multimeter adjacent to the temperature sensor. The purpose of the sensor is to detect the cold junction temperature and to compensate for the automatic cold junction temperature. In a nutshell, it is a process of conversion to ensure that the cold junction is always at zero degrees Celsius, as in the laboratory. The equalization takes place thanks to the specific algorithm designed for this situation. The processor of the instrument measures the electrical voltage of the joints, 
and the sum of the temperature of the cold junction. In this way, we can obtain a number expressed in millivolts, mv, which is later converted to the device itself into degrees centigrade, thus giving us the actual temperature of the hot junction. Now that we've seen how a thermal couple works, let's talk about some of the variations. Many thermocouples are classified according to the minimum and maximum temperature they can record. Consequently, they are made up of several different pairs of different metals. The model marked with the letter K is the most common, cheap, and available in many formats. Composed of chromel and alumel, detects a measurement range from negative 200 degrees Celsius to 1260 degrees Celsius. Type J, on the other hand, is composed of iron, and Constantana perceives temperatures ranging from negative 40 degrees Celsius to 750 degrees Celsius, and are less common than type K because they are more limited. They are used in older devices that do not support the K model. The T-type, composed of copper and Constantana, is very similar to the J model. It perceives temperatures between negative 200 degrees Celsius and 400 degrees Celsius, and is mainly used in laboratories. Model E, composed of chromel and constantana, is suitable for perceiving low temperatures because it is very sensitive. Type N, composed of nicrosyl and nicyl, measures the interval between 650 degrees Celsius and 1,250 degrees Celsius. Their stability and resistance to hot oxidation allow them to obtain excellent results for high temperatures. In fact, they are the most suitable solution, cheaper than platinum-based thermocouples. Types B, R, and S are those composed of noble metals, or platinum in different percentages. They are the most stable thermocouples, but their low sensitivity limits their use to measurements of high temperatures above 300 degrees Celsius. Basically, the thermocouples must be chosen based upon the temperature value to be measured. Previously, we talked about extension cables, specifically compensated cables, which extended the cold junction up to the multimeter for correct measurement. These cables are connected to the cold junction via a connector. There are connectors for each type of thermocouple, and they are built with the same material to avoid unwanted interference, especially when the connector can't be kept at a constant temperature. Our journey in the thermocouple sector, an essential tool in many industrial fields, ends here. If you find this video useful, let us know by leaving a like and a comment below. You can also share it. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We invite you to click on our website, jawscompany.com, to know more about our next projects.